Well, we've done it, folks. We have reached the end of 2023. This year has been absolutely amazing. So many wonderful, awesome things happened, and so many fantastic movies came out in theaters or streaming this year. I would love to know your list of favorite movies or your best movies of the year. Just leave them down in the comments below. Let's see if we have any of the same that end up on our lists. Some caveats before I get into this list. Firstly, I'm not a movie critic. I just really enjoy movies and I wanna talk about them online. So this isn't gonna be a best of list. These are just my personal favorites. If you didn't like these movies, that's your opinion. I had a great time with all 15 of the movies I have today. Although some of these are technically the best of this year, they just are also my favorites. Like my favorite movie from the past two years are ones that people wouldn't consider the best of that year, but they just hit me exactly where I wanted them to be at, and I love them for it. Like 2021 was No Time to Die, and 2022 was simply nope. Secondly, I have not seen a lot of the big movies this year. A lot of the ones that I've seen people putting on their best of lists are movies that I just didn't see. I would love to see poor things, but that's not in a movie theater near me. Thirdly, I draw a lot on how entertaining a movie is and whether I believe someone should pay the price for a ticket to go see that movie. And because of that, a lot of these really well-made films just aren't on my favorites list because I wouldn't necessarily recommend and you go see it. Killers of the Flower Moon is a great example. It's a really good movie, filmed expertly, directed really well by Martin Scorsese, has some epic performances, but it's not entertaining enough for me to take out any of the 15 movies that I have decided. And I have decided on 15 movies. I was really trying to whittle it down to 10, but that just seemed too impossible. So we are just gonna jump right into it. This is my favorite movies of 2023. Starting the list off at number 15, we have The Holdovers. I didn't have big expectations going in to see this movie, but it hit the Christmas vibes exactly where I wanted it to be. The slowness of this movie, of you just living with these characters as they live their lives while being stuck at the school grounds over Christmas break is just so wonderful. I connected with the main student character, Angus, a lot throughout this film. And Paul Giamatti gives an incredible performance, as does Divine Joy Randolph. If you still want to have a little holiday spirit and just watch a really good, funny movie, go watch The Holdovers. At number 14, we have Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves. I really enjoyed this movie. I have no expectations going in to see a Dungeons and Dragons movie just because I don't have like any experience with the roleplay franchise itself or any of the movies that were made before. But as a fantasy comedy action film, it worked so well that the direction in this movie is fantastic. The writing is there. All of the jokes land. All of the characters are wonderful and they mesh together so perfectly. It's truly an entertaining time. Number 13 is Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part. Part one. I'm a big fan of the Mission Impossible franchise, but Dead Reckoning Part 1, while still being a great movie, is just lower on the list of those movies in that franchise. Partly because it's a part one, I feel like it's not a complete movie, although all of the stunt work is so incredible. I think the car chase through Rome was handled really well. It was surprisingly funny. Haley Atwell is a surprisingly amazing addition to this franchise. And Tom Cruise, as always, just really gives it his all through these films. The train sequence at the very end of the movie, fucking outstanding. At number 12 is The Iron Claw. Yes, I saw this movie last night. Yes, it is on my favorites list. This is such a tragic movie and it is filmed perfectly. I mean, wow, I, I just can't believe how well this movie was helmed. Zac Efron gives the best performance of his entire career, as does his body. And it's just so heartbreaking to see how a father's determination to be the very best at something totally ruins his son's lives and just completely takes them over. The final scene of this movie is one of the best final scenes of the year. I was truly moved with how this movie ended. It was so perfect 
perfect. Zac Efron should deserve an Oscar nomination for this movie. I highly recommend you go check out The Iron Claw while it is still in theaters. At number 11 is Barbie. The first time I saw Barbie, I liked it, but didn't love it. I think I was just way too tired and didn't really know where the story was going. So for a comedy movie, it wasn't working for me. But the second time I saw it, I absolutely loved it. It made me bawl. It made me cry. I finally understood all the themes and what this movie is going for. Margot Robbie is fantastic. Greta Gerwig is a phenomenal director. Barbie is immaculately filmed. The production design is outstanding. America Ferreira gives the monologue of the year. You know what I'm talking about. I just want to see her perform that live and do it in one go. It'll be amazing. I love Barbie. It's super fun, but it doesn't crack the top 10 in my list. A travel comedy starring Ashley Park and Stephanie Hsu. Sign me the fuck up. Number 10 on my list is gonna be Joyride. If you at all know me, comedies aren't really my thing in a movie, but with this cast, this movie is so much fun. I love all of the characters. The journey these characters go through in traveling to China and later Japan is really wonderful. I am so happy I got this movie on Blu-ray. I bawled my eyes out during it, which to me is what makes a good comedy. Yes, if the jokes are good, it's a good comedy. But if I care about the characters enough to where I am sobbing during the movie, it's going to be in my top 10, let's be honest. I do think this movie is better than Girls Trip in that travel comedy sense. Foremost, from how much I care about the characters and the real story that they go through, in this movie regarding Ashley Park and her birth mother. It's just wonderful. I love it. We're gonna move on. Number nine is gonna be the best franchise horror of the year. In my opinion, that is Scream 6. Look, if a movie is so scary that I am sobbing in theaters because the characters could possibly die, you know that movie is really good. Scream is my favorite horror franchise and what Radio Silence did with Scream 5 or Scream, I was really looking forward to Scream 6 and it exceeded every expectation that I had. I saw this movie twice in theaters. That's how much I like Scream 6. I don't normally go see horror movies twice in the theater. New York City is a great backdrop for this movie. I love every chase sequence that happens to this film. There is extreme tension, which is what I felt Scream 5 was lacking, but in Scream 6, it's there, it's amazing. The gore in this is so disgusting. Hate what Spyglass Entertainment is doing with the franchise. I hope Scream 7 um, eventually gets made, but with the right people and right company producing it, um, it's so unfortunate that the production company is just a complete bunch of idiots. And I wish the very best for Melissa Barrera and Jen Ortega and all the cast in this movie. I really wish y'all got to have your trilogy. It is so unfortunate that you weren't able to, but thankfully you were in Scream 6. And that was a fantastic movie. At number eight is Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. I saw this movie at the AMC Disney Springs in the Dolby Theater. I missed a little bit of it, so I kind of didn't get the Gwen stuff throughout the film, but it made sense foremost. But I also just spent a whole day at the parks. But I still love the movie regardless. It is a perfect Spider-Man movie. The themes of what it means to be a Spider-Man and how that affects your life and what you have to go through is really interesting. I love the individuality of these characters and how every spider person feels different. The other universes that we travel to are all expertly depicted. I love this movie so much, but it is not my favorite superhero movie of the year, surprisingly, or my favorite animated movie of the year. Across the Spider-Verse is almost perfect though. I think the same thing with Dead Reckoning Part 1 is that this is part one of the whole story. I need to know how part two ends to know if this movie is really worth it in the end, if that makes sense. But nonetheless, it's a great movie. The cliffhanger at the end of this film is fantastic. I'm really intrigued to see where Beyond the Spider-Verse takes us. My seventh favorite movie of the year is one I was very worried about seeing in theaters. I was really worried this movie was not gonna be good, but it exceeded every expectation I had put on it. So The Little Mermaid is number seven. Halle Bailey is the best Ariel we could have gotten in live action. Her vocal performance is outstanding. 
I loved every new song in this movie. Maybe not so Uncharted Waters. This was a day one Blu-ray purchase. I needed to have this in my collection. It's the best musical of the year. I really love The Little Mermaid, what can I say? We are getting into my perfect movies. All of these next six movies are 10 out of 10 for me. And we are going to start with Godzilla minus one at number six on my list. I can't believe a Godzilla movie is this good. And I love Godzilla. I really enjoy the MonsterVerse franchise. So this being my first Japanese Godzilla theater experience, I couldn't believe how much I liked it. It's gonna suck every Godzilla movie after this, it not being as good as minus one. You've heard everyone say how good the characters are and how much you care about them. I loved in the beginning of this movie how Godzilla is basically a T-Rex and just flinging people around the stake are there. They're so personal. It's so amazing to see the people of Japan have to defend themselves and figure out this problem, not it being some big military issue. The score of this movie was immaculate. I just really love Godzilla Minus One. Um, if it's still in theaters, I don't know if it is. Um, you should definitely go see it. I really want to see the black and white version that's being released in Japan. And this is going to be a day one purchase as as well. At number five, we have the best original horror of the year. That is A24's Talk To Me. This movie was so fucking entertaining. I had so much fun with Talk To Me. It's really funny. It's really scary. It's a possession horror in a new way. I loved the hand prop in this movie. I'm not gonna forget Talk To Me ever. I can't wait to see what Talk To Me um, does and where they take this story. I love the ending of this movie. I think it's a perfect way this movie could have ended. So 2023 had some franchises that came to an end. And one of the movies that did that so well this year was John Wick Chapter 4. A surprising conclusion to the John Wick story. The action in this movie is fantastic. My rewatch of the John Wick franchise before this movie came out, which it came out on my birthday, Thursday pre Reviews, so that's what I did for my birthday. It was fantastic. In this franchise, I love when Keanu Reeves empties a gun of its bullets and he doesn't have any to reload, so he just throws the empty gun at the attackers. It's very funny to me. That happens a couple times in this movie. The overhead one shot in this film is maybe the best shot of the entire year. Maybe. It's hard to say with what my number one pick is, but John Wick chapter four was outstanding. I love this movie. I love the action. It's a perfect finale to the John Wick story. But it was not the best conclusion to a franchise this year. At number three, we have Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. I know superhero fatigue has come over this year, but I think Volume 3 was the perfect finale any of these Guardians could have asked for. I'm a big Guardians of the Galaxy fan. It was my introduction into the MCU. My parents got the Guardians of the Galaxy movie on 3D for me for Christmas one year. It was one of my first Blu-rays that I had. So I just hold a lot of love for this franchise. Volume 2 is my favorite MCU movie. I think it's the best of them all. And I think James Gunn did an incredible job. I rewatched this movie on Thanksgiving and the ending scene when Dog Days Are Over starts. I was gutturally sobbing. I, I was making noises from how much I was crying. Like the tears were just pouring down. I think this movie was perfect for my emotional state. I got to see this with Anthony. And so this movie is very special to me. I can look over any negative this movie possibly has for how much it emotionally impacted me and how much, in my opinion, this is a perfect conclusion to the Guardians franchise. I bought our shirt to go see this movie. I got the... I, I got the Rocket popcorn tub because I'm fucking stupid and really love this movie and Rocket is my favorite character from these movies and in the MCU in general. So like, of course I was gonna get this popcorn tub. Any of these top four movies could have been number one. Um, depending on my mood, they could take it. So just know this could have been one of my favorites. It was my favorite at the time when I saw it, but then it got eclipsed 
when I saw the number two movie on my list. That movie being Elemental. Okay, I'm a Pixar fanatic. I saw Elemental three times in theaters. I cried every single time I saw it. For Pixar to make a romantic comedy with themes of immigration and what it feels like to be in a family that has immigrated to another place and the expectations put onto you by your family or by yourself. I just think it's really special. And the way Pixar did this movie, it's so funny. The comedy in it is fantastic. Steal the Show was my favorite song of the year as well. It was my top listened to song on my Spotify wrapped. So that was pretty fantastic. I made a whole video on this if you want to go watch that because I will talk about this movie way too long if we do not move forward. So just go watch that video. And that brings us to my favorite movie and also the best movie of 2023. That title is going to Oppenheimer. Ugh, I loved Oppenheimer so fucking much. Christopher Nolan is my favorite director. So I was bound to love this movie going into it. And I was completely taken aback by this movie. I saw this movie twice in theaters, which is about three and a half elementals, if you want to know how much time I put into the theater experience for this film. And when it comes out in IMAX, I want to go see it again. Christopher Nolan does a tremendous job in this movie. Emily Blunt has perhaps the best scene in all of film in 2023 when she's giving her testimony. Killian Murphy deserves the Best Actor Oscar and Best Actor Award in anything though. And the twist that happens in this movie at the end took me completely off guard. Robert Downey Jr. is fucking phenomenal in this movie. Truly outstanding performance by RDJ. I can't believe that he did that. The cinematography in this movie is immaculate it. That's why I needed to get the 4K for this movie. The way this movie stunned me and left me feeling so disgusted leaving the theater just knowing how America reacted to the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It's truly just gut-wrenching and gross and exploitative what America did to the Japanese. Ludwig Jorensen gives us the best score of the year in my opinion. I listened to the Oppenheimer score so much after this movie came out. It was on repeat for about a couple months. I just don't see another movie that is such a pinnacle of filmmaking. This movie makes me want to get into making movies even more. More. I feel like both times I saw this movie, I felt like I was learning more and more about film. It was just an outstanding experience. And I'm so thankful I got to see this movie twice. Christopher Nolan, you fucking bastard. How do you keep doing this? I love practical stuff in movies. So the fact that this movie is 100% practical is truly a work of art and a marvel in film. I could not say enough about this movie without taking too much time. So I'm just gonna leave you with that. Oppenheimer is my favorite movie of the year. So those are my favorite movies of the year. All 15 movies I will own at some point. I just love film so much and 2023 was outstanding in that regard. Some of the best movies of my entire life came out. So let me know down below what you thought about my list. Do you disagree with any of these placements? Thank you all so much for an amazing 2023. I recently reached 550 subscribers, which was my goal for the end of the year. And I'm so happy about that. By the end of 2024, I'm hoping to reach 1,000 subscribers and hopefully review a movie every week. I know Night Swim is the first movie we're getting out this year, unless I can go see the new Jake Johnson Hulu movie. I think it's only in theaters for one night on January 3rd, so I'll go try to see that. But otherwise, I hope you all have an amazing new year. Please give this movie a like if you liked it, and hit subscribe if you wanna see more from me, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye